Welcome to lesson five. Today, I want to focus on strings, more specifically, string formatting and also string manipulation. So let's start with string formatting. You can kind of think of this as putting placeholders. For example, in school, you probably did some assignments where you had to fill in the blanks, like putting the correct verb into the sentence. And that's basically what we'll be doing with string formatting. So let's do a print and let's say, hello, Vincent. And if we run this code, we'll get hello, Vincent. But what if we want to change the name to something else? Uh, instead of copying this and then putting hello, David, and then running the code, now we get hello, Vincent, hello, David. It kind of gets redundant. So instead of adding another print statement, instead we can do string formatting. So how we can do this is we can do print hello and then open the squiggle bracket and close the squiggle bracket. Inside it, you want to put the value zero. And then outside the quotation marks, you want to put a dot and type format. And then you want to open the brackets again. So now inside the brackets, let's put Vincent. So now let's run this code. And now you'll see hello Vincent. So all we're really doing is we're saying hello and we're putting some underscores where we're filling it in with a value after. So in this case, this squiggly bracket with a zero stands for a placeholder. And in this placeholder, we're putting the value Vincent. So if we want more placeholders, all we have to do is add more squiggle brackets. So one important thing to know is when you add another placeholder, you have to increment the value inside it. So we started with zero here. So the next one will be one and the next one will be two. And then what we need to do is we need to provide the values here. So now we can put, you know, 100 or false. And then if we run this code, we're going to get hello, Vincent, 100 false, which are basically the values we provided. So just a fun fact in programming, we like to count from zero instead of one. Hence why we start with a zero here and then a one and then a two. So this probably doesn't really make sense right now, but let me show you a real life example of how we can use this. Let's think of the app Instagram. On Instagram, they usually show you uh, the number of followers you have, and then they'll have some placeholder here, and then they'll tell you how many people you're following, and then also maybe how many likes you have. So notice how each of these require a value for the placeholders. So basically to do this, all we really need to do is print, and then inside here we put followers, and then we put the squiggle bracket zero, and then following uh, squiggle bracket one, and then likes squiggle bracket two. And then after that, we add the dot format. And in here, we pass in the value. So let's say we have 100 followers, you know, and 10 follow. Whoops, so this should have been uh, following. Uh, so we have 10 following, and we have, you know, 1 million likes. So now let's click run. So notice how we got an error here. It's saying invalid syntax. The problem here is we're putting the number one with an M and that doesn't work because there isn't a type for that. So if we want to use this value, what we have to do is wrap it in a string where a string is basically a sequence of characters. Now if we click run, we're going to see followers 100, following 10 and likes 1 million. So that's the basic use case. Uh, so now we can actually add variables into this as well. So now we can add a variable called followers equals 100, and then we can do following equals 10, and then likes equals 1 million. And now instead of putting 100 here, we could put followers, and instead of 10, we could put following, and then for likes, we could replace this with likes. And now if we run the code, we're going to get the same thing. So the reason why we want to use variables is so that way we can update it. So instead of having 100 followers, we can double that by multiplying it by 2. So now we should have 200. And now we can copy this print statement from line 10 to line 12. And we don't have to change anything. And if we click run, it's going to show that we have 200 followers. And that's how we can use variables in string formatting. So that way we can change the text without changing the print statement. This is important because when we work with real life data, we want the statement to stay the same, but we want the values to change accordingly. Next, I'd like to talk about string manipulation, which is basically updating a string value. So previously we talked about updating variables. So let's go back to the previous example. 
my name equals Vincent. So now if I want to change the name, all we have to do is my name equals David. And that will basically change the name to David. So what we can do is we can add on to this string. For example, we can do my name equals my name plus, and then we add a space here with another plus, and then let's put Vincent. So now let's add a print statement to line four, print my name, and let's run the code. So now we get David space Vincent. So now we can also apply the same shortcut with plus equal. So in this case, it'll be my name plus equals space Kevin. And let's print this out. And as expected, we get David, Vincent, and Kevin. What we learned here is important when we want to build up a string from multiple values. For example, on Instagram, when you get multiple people liking your picture, you'll see a message like Vincent, comma, David, comma, Jackie likes your photo. So basically here, we're grabbing the values for the three different names and putting it together into one sentence and then displaying it to the user. So that's how you can use string manipulation to build up a value. Another cool thing that we can do with a string is we can also multiply it. So let's create a variable called x and let's set the value to x. And let's print x and if you run the code, you're just going to see 1x. So we can do print x multiplied by 10. And all this really does is it gives you 10 of those x's. And you can even multiply by 100 if you want. And now you get 100 x's. So feel free to play around with this and try these concepts out. And that's it for strings. Hopefully you learned something new. Feel free to like and subscribe so that way you don't miss out on the next lesson.